During World War II, civil rights were being challenged, providing momentum for the civil rights movement to come. In 1941, civil rights leader A. Philip Randolph organized a march on Washington, D.C. to protest racial discrimination in the defense industries. President Franklin D. Roosevelt failed to persuade Randolph to call off the march. Desperate to keep the march from taking place, FDR signed Executive Order 8802 that banned racial discrimination in defense industry jobs. This order was effective only during the war and would not apply to the automotive industry after car production continued. Randolph called off the march, and FDR's order later led to the establishment of the Fair Employment Practices Commission, or the FEPC. In 1942, the federal government built the Sojourner Truth Homes in a white neighborhood of Detroit to house the increasing black population. On March 1st, a mob of 1,200 whites, many of whom were armed, rioted and turned families away who were attempting to move in. By the end of the riot, 14 people had been injured and 20 were arrested. With the help of 1,000 armed soldiers, African-American families were able to move in safely. On June 20th, 1943, Skirmishes began on Belle Isle in Detroit, Michigan, fueled by racial tension and unfounded rumors. As violence erupted, both white and black gangs roamed the streets, fighting and looting. The all-white police force did little to stop the violence against blacks. President Roosevelt ordered military troops into Detroit, finally ending the violence after 36 hours of fighting. Also in 1943, the federal government mandated that Packard Motor Company break the color line and promote its black workers. The company gave in and promoted three black women to work the drill press. Immediately, white women in that department went on strike and vowed not to return until the three women were demoted. Packard acquiesced and removed them. Three months later, the company promoted three black men to the aircraft assembly line. 25,000 white workers walked out. This time, Packard did not give in to the demands of its workers. When World War II ended, President Roosevelt died of a cerebral hemorrhage on April 12, 1945. Later that day, Harry S. Truman was sworn in as the 33rd President of the United States. On December 6, 1946, President Truman issued Executive Order 9808, establishing the President's Committee on Civil Rights to examine the condition of civil rights in the United States. It documented nationwide discrimination in areas such as education, housing, public accommodations, and voting rights. As a result of its findings, Truman would later issue Executive Orders 9980 and 9981, which led to the desegregation of the federal workforce and the armed forces. African Americans in the automotive industry were one of the first challengers of civil liberties in industrial America post-slavery. The color barriers that were broken in the automotive industry soon encouraged other industries to do the same. The 1950s and 1960s brought about the civil rights movement and important figures like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X. Whether as part of the workforce, war industry, union formation, or the formation of the city of Detroit, African Americans served as the backbone to the automotive industry. Professionals like William Perry, Ed Davis, or James Charles Price contributed to the industry throughout history by breaking barriers and challenging discrimination. These contributions have paved the way for future African American designers, engineers, and assembly line workers.